What's up? You're in the Beat Sessions. I'm your host, Mitchell Weary, and we are looking at the brand new record from Madlib, which came out on January 29th. It's called Sound Ancestors, and what a treat this record was to listen to. I'm giving it a vinyl please right off the bat because I'm pleased to no end with this project. You know, the big thing here at the Beat Sessions is the concept of the album. It's going to be one of the big things that we talk about on the show. You know, as I have different guests, you know, talk about uh, their idea of what the perfect record is and the things that they identify and like. On, on their favorite albums. But for me, uh, you know, a perfect record, uh, a, a cohesive concept, uh, an idea, and something that just flows uh, from start to finish. You know, you don't even have to skip a track. It's, it, it's almost like it, it feels like a, a single composition almost. Like that, to me, is a good record. And this record, Sound Ancestors, is pretty much everything that I'm looking for when I talk about that. Uh, just a, a marvelous project that Madlib teamed up with Fortet to make happen. And they've worked together in the past, actually, on the Mad Villainy remixes that Fortet put out. Um, that's from the record that uh, Madlib and uh, MF Doom famously collaborated on. Rest in peace, MF Doom. But it, it was cool to see those guys, uh, and they've been friends for like two decades now, too. It's cool to see them finally come together uh, and make something happen um, creatively. Uh, it's definitely the way that Madlib works. A lot of talk usually before a project comes to fruition, but I like his style. I like the way he does things organically. And usually when he talks, there's you know it, it might take some time, but it generally happens. This record starts off phenomenally. The opening track is really cool, but I'm gonna finish up the review talking about that because it, it definitely builds on uh, thematically what's going on with the record. But the first four songs where you're really getting into the the nitty gritty on the music. Song's called The Call, uh, Theme to Crabtree, Road of the Lonely Ones, and Loose Goose. And all of these songs, just like just one into another, just the, the transition and the flow of the music is incredible. Considering the number of, of different uh, artistic influences that are coming in, I mean, you get like psychedelic rock, Motown, funk, blues, soul, hip hop. It's all over the place, but just so well constructed and and conceptualized and put together that you listen in awe, and it really sets the groundwork for you know this forty one minute venture. It's sixteen tracks. It really, again, just everything about it is just put together so nicely. And you talk about those musical influences that Madlib has drawn on. The biggest one that I love is the jazz influence, and artistically, he's been involved in a number of jazz projects over the year. But I love. Uh, thematically, uh, what is going on here with that jazz element? Um, you know, there's a really cool book by this gentleman named Albert Murray called "The Hero and the Blues." I'm going to pull up this quote here. Uh, and the the big focus on that essay, he talks about the unspoken kinship between fictional literature and the characters in those stories, and the relationship between musicians on stage, blues musicians and jazz musicians. Uh, Duke Ellington is one of the their, uh, yeah Duke Ellington is one of the main focal points of uh, of this novel and Murray writes he argues that both fiction and blues and jazz uh, are virtuoso performances that impart information wisdom and moral guidance to their audiences both place a high value on improvisation which there's definitely a strong element of improvisation throughout sound ancestors that I think you'll pick up on and really enjoy it makes it phenomenal. Uh, and he also says that both fiction and the blues create a delicate balance between the holy and the obscene, essential human values, and cosmic absurdity. So if you've never checked out this essay, it's it's phenomenal. It's a really cool read. It's a quick read. It's probably something that Madlib himself has read, or you know, at the very least, he's familiar with the ideas. Um, and this record embodies you know that that spirit, that idea. It, it it's it's a frenzied album. It definitely moves from one song to the other quickly. It's um, you know it's fast and chaotic at times, but much like life, much like jazz, there are times when it's uh, it's slowed down. You know, based on you know the syncopated ideas in the music, you have time to reflect and you know absorb everything, absorb all that beauty and and take it in. And so it's really a cool experience uh, for that reason. Uh, that final track that I'm talking about to, to wrap up this interview, uh, to build on more of the theme of the record, it's called There Is No Time is the name of that opening track. It's a, it's a prelude, and I love the dichotomy there as far as that phrase and the way you can say it. Um, it definitely creates a sense of urgency as in there is no time, you know, which builds on the, that, that jazz theme, that blues idiom, uh, the distorted frenzy reality that is life that is a stage performance with blues 
or jazz. But, you know, it also builds on that philosophical idea of there is no time. It's a construct, whatever. And it's really cool because that is fundamentally what Sound Ancestors is about. It's about reaching back and tapping into all of that wonderful music that, uh, that was put before us that basically, uh, you know, that's the, the, the shoulders of the giants that all of us stand on at this point. I listen to this record and I really can't help but feel, uh, think of like Fela Kuti above all else, even with all the other different uh, influences throughout the record. Um, you know, really paying homage to a guy like that and just musicians all over the world, all throughout time. The last song is this track called uh, Dumbie and it samples a, uh, a song from a group called Six Boys in Trouble. This is a, uh, a recording that was made in Harlem in the 50s. And it's considered by the Smithsonian to be the first um, recorded uh, evidence of the hip-hop genre. So it's just, it's really cool to um, see Madlib acknowledge, you know, his place, um, you know, in that, in that line that, you know, one day he will be, you know, part of that ancestry, part of the shoulders of those giants that, that we continue to build off of. And I just, I love everything that's going on. I love the spirit of the record. I think it's beautiful. I, I love the idea that the music is timeless and that, you know, a good song can be passed down forever. Um, you know, as long as, as long as that there are people around to, uh, to love it and to, and to hold it dear, um, you know, it will persevere. So this has been the Beat Sessions. I, I'm going to give this, again, a, a strong vinyl, please, buy this record. I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And I hope you've enjoyed this review. Please uh, hit the like button. Crush it for me. Crush that like button. Subscribe to the channel. And we're starting the live show on Sunday at 6 p.m. at Mountain Standard Time. That'll be happening once a week. Please do tune in, and we'll catch you next time on the Beat Sessions.